Hello everyone, I'm Marina and it's a Cramel School. Here are my today's model's nails. And there is a gel coating on one hand, while there is none on the other one. It fell off. We can see that the nails are red and thinned down. Besides, the client wants a square shape, but right now the shape is far from that, since some of the corners are missing. For example, on the index finger. Now let's remove the old coverage. And we can see that while we're doing that, the coating comes off in pieces. There might have been the wrong application technique. Or it might have been caused by the nail plate condition. Or the wrong base coat. So the reasons might be different. Since even the degreaser you're using matters. I pushed the cuticle with a pusher, so that I could easily get there with the drill bit later. I'm using the red flame drill bit, 0.21 in diameter. Forward position, the speed is 15 to 17 thousand RPM. Cleaning out the left sides, removing all the pterygium. Switch the rotation direction and process the right sides, pulling the cuticle well in the area being processed. Make sure to use a brush, not just move around with the drill bit, guessing whether it's pterygium or just dust. Let's buff the nail plate before cutting the cuticle, so as not to ruffle it later. To cut the cuticle, I'm using curved scissors. They are very comfortable. This cuticle is just right for this cutting method. There are some tiny hangnails left. I need to touch them up, so I apply some sanitizer and polish the skin. I'm using a medium green silicone carbide drill bit. If the skin is drier, you can use a grey one. Degrease and apply some acid-free primer. Since my model's nails are thin and there is no need for extra acidity. The base coat I'm using is also acid-free. There is a missing corner on the index finger, and the thumb curls a lot, and we need to restore those areas, since otherwise we won't get that square shape. I'm using such milky acry gel in a thin layer to match the nail plate. We will also need some aligning liquid, so that there are no liftings later. I put a small amount of acrygel on the free edge and start spreading it. We need to get it up to the middle of the natural nail, for a good bonding and a strong tip. I'm pulling out the material forming the missing corners, making sure to lift it up from the inside a bit, cause when you're pulling it toward yourself, there is a high chance that it falls under the nail, and you will have to drill it out later. So make sure to lift up the material before putting it into the lamp. We're building up the missing corner on the index finger first. And then we will need to strengthen the left side wall. Since if we leave it like this, as thin as it is right now, it can easily break later. Before curing, there should already be that perfect square shape. And you might have noticed that I haven't filed off the lens. I will do it later. 
The thumb curls a lot. So we need to fix this issue. So I put some acrogel and start spreading it, pulling out the corners. Then sand to cure. This strengthening type is perfect for such thin nails, since almost no gel polishes hold well on them. And this way we can protect the nails from chipping. I have cured and degreased the nails. Now let's move on to shaping them. I'm shaping a square and polish the nail surface a bit. Our task is to form an even surface without any bumps. To make sure that the shape is even, turn the hand over and check if one corner is not higher than the other one. Actually, such nail strengthening doesn't take too much time, since the techs often think that it's a really long process, but in fact it isn't. We could have applied Acrogel on two or four nails at once, spread it and only then cure. This way we can even extend the free edge a bit. I degrease the nail plate and move on to the aligning part. I will be using a medium density self-aligning base coat. I apply most of it near the cuticle and almost none on the free edge, since there is already hard acrogel. Turn the hand over and even out the material, pushing it toward the cuticle. Once it's all even, we can move on to applying color. We have chosen such a warm pink shade. And we will also do a design using stickers. Apply two layers of color. Chill the finger down to prevent leaking. You can use a thin brush near the cuticle if needed, since every leak is a future lifting. You must have noticed the free edge thickness by now. But don't worry, we will file it out from the inside later. The thickness should be equal to a plastic card. I wipe off the tacky layer of the thumb and attach a sticker. I love such stickers because they are sticky and you don't have to sock them as sliders. They look great, though. I apply a non-tacky top coat. I cure the nail and paint such a small circle on the thumb and sprinkle some acrylic powder on top of it. It will look cool on the glossy top coat. Just a matte circle. That is so nice to touch. And here comes that very secret, proving 100% wearability. We need to drill out the natural nail from the inside. Since no nail, no problems, no liftings. I'm using a thin blue carbide drill bit. First, I turn the hand over and drill it out in the forward position, moving from right to left. Then I turn it back and smooth out the arch, moving from left to right. I check if it's all even. And as a result, we get such beautiful thin curves since we have lifted up some of the fallen tips. Then I polish the tips and the sides. 
for even more definition, so that there is a sharp square. It's a quick and easy strengthening technique that will provide a perfect coating wearability with no chips and liftings, so make sure to try it out on your clients. Did you like the result? Then give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I wish you all success in your work. Good luck! Bye-bye!